Hello and welcome to my first in a series of video tutorials on Unity. Uh, in this tutorial I'm going to be going over the very very basics of this program which is an awesome tool. Uh, I'm sure that you will love it as much as I do if you're new to Unity. If you're not un new to Unity uh, feel free to skip ahead to some of my later tutorials on the more advanced topics. Uh, today we're just going to be dealing with uh, some idea of what all these little windows we have going on here are and uh, just what Unity is basically. So to start off, if you just downloaded Unity and opened it for the first time, you're probably looking at something like this. This is the default project for this version of Unity. It's called Angry Bots. It's a interesting little game. You can run it here and we'll take a look at it. Nice rain effect. Oh, I'm being attacked. I'll go inside, but it's a little quieter. So obviously you can see that Unity very, very capable 3D engine. Not much you can't do in here. And this is just the free version. So, I think that's enough looking around for now. So, that's great and all, Jesse, you're saying, but uh, how do I make my own game? Well, let's get started on that, shall we? Well, the first thing you want to do is set up your own project. So we'll come over here to File and get a new project. And over here, you can name this anything you want to. I'm going to name it Intro Tutorial. Now you can import a bunch of free assets that come with Unity some very useful stuff in here uh, character controller is something you probably usually want for today we're not going to muddy up the waters by including any of Unity's default packages we're just going to create an empty project we don't want to save anything we did to their project might screw something up now Unity is going to close and create a new project for us and then open back up and now we see that we have a very very lonesome project here doesn't have any of the clutter that we saw in the other project and I'll start explaining what's going on here so first of all these windows here the scene window is a 3D view of the game objects in your current scene not much going on in here right now you can use the right mouse button to rotate your view around. You can also use this thing over here to jump to any view. Here's a right view, top view. We'll go back by clicking the middle. You can go back to perspective view. You can also rotate around in an ISO view. You get to the ISO view by clicking any one of these directional views and then rotating around with the right mouse button like you normally would. This view acts a little differently than the perspective view. I'll go over those differences later. Right now we'll just leave a perspective. The game view shows you the view from the player's perspective inside the game. It's also the window that will allow you to run the game. Uh, in our empty game object project here we don't have a whole lot going on. We'll get back to that a little bit later. Down here, we have the hierarchy. This is everything that exists inside your scene, inside your current scene. And you can have multiple scenes in any given project. Uh, right now, we just have an untitled default scene. But you could have dozens and dozens, uh, depending on the complexity of your game. Inside 
our default scene, we can see over here in the hierarchy that we actually have an object, the camera. It is way over here somewhere. And you can see when I select it, it allows me to move it around inside the 3D world, inside the scene view by dragging these arrows here. A useful tip if you want to be able to quickly find something inside the scene view and you're not sure exactly where it is. For instance, maybe my camera is pointing like this. I'm like, so where is this camera thing it says I have? Well, once you've selected it here, you can bring your mouse over top of the scene view and hit F. And it will center the view on the object you have selected. Uh, another useful way of navigating the scene view here is the middle mouse button, which will allow you to pan the view go side to side and up and down as opposed to rotating the view around. So we got this camera. What's this stuff that popped up over here when I selected it? Well this is the inspector and everything in your game world is represented by a game object and those game objects have components. We'll get more into depth with those and what these two menus mean in a later video. But right now it's enough to know that this camera here is a game object like anything else in this world would be and it has certain components which show up under the inspector over here when I have it selected. Now these are the camera specific component here. We also have some few other things like a GUI layer so that we can do uh, heads up displays. We have an audio listener which is uh, required for 3D sound. This component basically allows you to know where in the world in relation to a given sound that might be a localized sound uh, it, it allows the game to figure out how to render that sound so. one important thing to know about game objects is all game objects have a transform component and this transform component is simply the position rotation and scale of that object in the 3d world so as you can see when I'm moving this over here, you'll see the refer the variables change over in the inspector view. And that's very useful in case you need to have some specific setting perhaps that you need something at a very specific place in your world. Uh, we won't get into that right now. It's, it's also useful if I want to say look directly down. I can simply set the X rotation on the camera to 90 and I'm looking down. Or if I want it to look over at me, I'll set the Y and it will turn to face me. So, that's the inspector. Obviously, very useful. Uh, we will do one last thing here. We're running a little low on time. But I will start talking about other game objects and how you start putting stuff into your world. So we, we have the scene view over here we have the hierarchy view. And you say, well, how can I start putting stuff in here? You can come over here to game object and you could create an empty game object. Very easy to do. But uh, that's not very interesting. It has a transform. Like I said, all game objects will have a transform. They will have a position in the 3D world. But even if we use F here to zoom in on this thing, uh, not much going on. It's completely nothing. You can actually, if you deselect it, the only way you could reselect it is to come over here to the hierarchy because it doesn't have any physical presence in the game world. It just has this abstract notion of position. So that's not very interesting. So we're just going to delete that empty game object. And ga empty game objects are useful. Uh, you can add components to them and start building out different things. You can also use them as an organizational thing because you can parent other game objects underneath them. But we don't want to start off with an empty game object. We want to start off with something a little more interesting. So we're going to come over here and create a cube. And now that we have a cube in the world, we can see in this preview here, if we come over to the game view, that look, our world now has a cube. And we'll start talking about what we can do to that cube in the next video.